This is Lyle Murphy. I'm the founder of the Alternative to Med Center. And today we're going to be talking about a drug called Fivance. And our readers and viewers have given me a few questions they wanted me to try to answer. And um, the first question would be, is Vyvanse addictive? Yes. And it's addictive because people just like it. You know, they like the, they like the buzz. They like the up. Um, is it addictive in the same way that heroin is addictive or um, Xanax is addictive? No. I mean, it's not going to completely decimate you when you stop. It, you'll sleep and it be uncomfortable and might be angry and cry and but it it is addictive you know it's it's uh, it's like it's kind of like a lighter version of um, methamphetamines um next question how do i cope with the side effects of vivance well it depends on what side effects um you know you're talking about um generally the side effects from vivance are going to be jitteriness um irritability inability to sleep so if it's inability to sleep, you would typically take the medication um, earlier in the morning so that it has time to clear your system so you can go to sleep. Um, if it's a matter of jitteriness and um, um, irritation, um, eating, you know, just having food in your system, because when you take a stimulant, they're not really hungry. So eating first and, and then taking a stimulant could um, knock down the jitteriness a bit. And also maybe taking something like taurine or theanine or something to kind of mediate the effect of it. <clears throat> it's um, These are typically what they put in energy drinks so that people don't have the jitteriness from the energy drinks. So that would be, again, taurine, theanine, <clears throat> things like that. Uh, next question. Is Vyvanse better than Adderall? What's the difference? Somehow I might. I just saw like a cage match ring. Ding, 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 ding. Which one's better? Um... Well, Vyvanse, okay, Vyvanse takes a little bit longer, like maybe an hour after you take it for you to feel it. <clears throat> Vyvanse, um, Vyvanse isn't an active compound in and of itself. It, it has to be metabolized in your system to make the active compound, which is basically the same active compound as what is in Ritalin, but it's not a direct path. It has to go kind of around a little bit. So Vyvanse will last longer in your system than Adderall. But it also um, isn't as immediate, immediate as an effect. And um, <clears throat> Vyvanse is a lot more expensive. <laughs> I mean, a lot more expensive. So um, if, um, if the price point is a concern to you, then um, yeah, Adderall is definitely cheaper. <clears throat> um, can you skip Vyvanse on the weekends? That's actually kind of a, I hadn't really actually thought about that, but that's some. Um, it's kind of a brilliant way because, <clears throat> you know, taking stimulants every single day is going to have side effects and ramifications on, you know, how you operate. And giving yourself a break on the weekends would be great. So, um, yeah, you can skip it on the weekends. Uh, you know, if you're using it to study or to go to work or, you know, um, during the weekday, um, giving yourself a break on the weekends to, to kind of, you know, reset. It's a brilliant idea. I like it. Um, does Vyvanse help depression? Well, it helps depression in a similar way as cocaine helps depression, you know? It gives you that lift, it gives you that up, it gives you more available dopamine, um, which is a reward neurochemical, but that comes at a cost. It doesn't, you know, you don't, you don't get to ride this ride forever. It, eventually, the, the music stops playing, and the drug doesn't have the same effect, and you're taking more and more and more of it, and you're constantly tired, you're constantly depressed, and you're constantly just bleh, and the drug doesn't take you anywhere. So um, so the answer to the question is yes, for a little bit. I had a I had a friend one time with this um motorhome that was had this big, huge um gas tank in the back. It was like this big butane tank. The whole seat was missing. There's like this butane tank. And so I asked this question. I said, hey, could you smoke back here? And he said, he said yes, one time. It's kind of like how it is with Vyvanse. Yes, it will help with depression for a period of time, but then it stops. Um, and can actually make the depression substantially worse and stick a person in a trap where they're just kind of stuck there. So um, 
yeah, it's definitely not a, it's, it, the, 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 it comes at a price. So, um, <clears throat> there's probably other ways to attune to your depression. You know, I know that exercising and a good diet is just so hard, but it's a lot less hard than having to deal with the side effects of these medications and, um, the detriments that they can cause. So get your body moving, get exercising, get the jerks out of your life, be around healthy minded people. And, um, that probably be a lot more sustainable. Uh, next question. What drugs should not be taken with Vyvanse? <clears throat> well, one that if somebody has a manic or psychotic disposition, they should not be doing a stimulant because that is a sure way to end up with um, a, um, you know, resurgence of your psychosis. Um, but of course, people who are on antipsychotics are so, uh, you know, the dopamine is so gone that they're looking for something to kind of lift them up. So they'll be pulled towards stimulants. But um, they're really oppositional drugs. The, um, they shouldn't really be used in combination. And a person who has psychotic features shouldn't be taking stimulants because it could make their psychotic features certainly escalate. Um, how bad is, the next question, how bad is the withdrawal from Vyvanse? It's not bad. I mean, the withdrawal from all the other medication classes can be, I mean, some people seem to have um, the karmic grace to be able to miss the bullet on the withdrawal manifestations of drugs, but antipsychotics are the worst. Very, very difficult to navigate antipsychotic withdrawal. Benzodiazepines come in um, below that, substantially below it, but still they're pretty bad. And then you've got things like opiates and heroin, and then you've got things like antidepressants, and you know, here's Vyvanse, like way down here. Now, some people can definitely go into a horrific, almost suicidal depression, um, albeit brief, um, <clears throat> and um, can have a lot of disconcerting effects. I'm not trying to minimize that, um, that the withdrawal could be um, concerning, but... Um, uh, the majority of people can get through it. Uh, is it possible to develop it? Now, <clears throat> let me rephrase that. So most people can get through it, but then what are they left with? Are they still left with the lethargy? Are they still left with the inability to focus and the other things that they started taking the medications for in the first place? Yes, likely. And when you don't have any reward in life and you don't have any focus, the I mean, it's almost from a place of compassion. You want to have that lift, so you're going to be drawn to taking the drug again. So um, there's other things that you can do, though, to build up your energy reserves that are much more sustainable. <clears throat> so I do take compassion with people who um, are drawn towards stimulants and the withdrawal that they go through and the symptoms that they have that's, that seem intolerable that make them want to go back to using the drugs. But um, <clears throat> you can recover from this place. And if, and if you're giving your body the support it needs, the adrenals the support that it needs, um, you can actually have far more energy than, um, <clears throat> most of the time you can have far more energy than you know what to do with if you do it right. And it's much more sustainable. You, it's, it's kind of like, this is very similar when you, when you take the drug like Vyvanse, it's kind of like you're running out of gas. So you step on the accelerator. Yes. You'll, um, get to the gas station quicker maybe, but, um, you're going to run into gas faster. You know what I mean? So um, it doesn't actually put more gas in your tank like other things do. Okay. Is it possible to develop a tolerance to Vyvanse? Yes. This is a drug that you are almost certainly going to build up a tolerance to. If you're taking it every day, it's going to become less and less and less and less and less and less effective. And you're going to be taking more and more and more and more and more to try to get the same effect. <clears throat> uh Next question, what are the differences between Focalin and Vyvanse? Uh, really, the main difference is the price. Vyvanse is very expensive. It has um, not, it doesn't have a generic form at this time, and um, Focalin does, so it's substantially cheaper. I, don't, I think a prescription of Vyvanse might cost $350 a month, which is a lot, you know, for most people. And, um, but otherwise, they operate very similar. Um, all right, next question. If I take L-tyrosine, will it potentiate the effect of Vyvanse? Um, 
Now, speaking of nutraceutical things, tyrosine is a precursor to dopamine. So um, doing it nutraceutically would be one way to um, you know, help build up your dopamine levels by using L-tyrosine. Uh, and so, yes, L-tyrosine will potentiate the effect of Vyvanse. But hopefully by taking the L-tyrosine and maybe some other things like moving your body, you won't have to take the Vyvanse at all, which would be the real boon, right? Um, next question. Is it possible to successfully withdraw from taking Adderall or Vyvanse? Yes, I mean, it, it's, again, these, the, 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 the challenge with these drugs is they just, the effect of them just generally doesn't last forever. And giving these, giving these medications to kids, you know, kids, if you looked at the neurology of a child, in, in comparison to an adult, you would think that this this nervous system is um is broken, is impaired, because certain things are not wired up correctly. Reflexes are different, you know. Um, how things are integrated are different. How dopamine is expressed is different. I mean, when you're coming into your puberty, that's the time when you get the dopamine parts of your brain wired up. That's when the, that's when you start getting interested in the opposite sex or the same sex. I mean, it, in, in intimacy. An attraction to people and um, reward that the is out there somewhere. You know, um, dopamine is sort of a um, neurochemical that tells us that there's a reward that lies outside of ourselves uh, that we are drawn to to get us to move in a certain direction. So, a job, um, um, intimacy, um, some sort of um, you know. Uh, shopping, you know, things like that, things that are out there. It's kind of, it's kind of like oxytocin in a way, but with oxytocin, the reward is in here and in close in proximity. Dopamine tells you, hey, you, you know, you go on a Lewis and Clark expedition to the other side of the country, and that's where you're going to find gold. Okay. Now, when you are a child and you first start getting that, that can be very ADD or just kind of all over the place, right? And especially if you're consuming a lot of sugar and a lot of, 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 um, artificial sweeteners and uh, monster drinks. I mean, and, and then it's trying to sit in a room where you have to like sit still when you have five times as much energy than I do right now, right? Um, and I can hardly sit still. So they, the notion of giving a stimulant at that age is pretty preposterous. It just, oh, it just irritates me. And I've seen that the wiring and how those dopamine pathways are laid down, you've just, you've just impacted a specific age-dependent neurological wiring in a way that may not come back. So um, yes, you can successfully withdraw from Adderall and Vyvanse, particularly as an adult, and have uh, normal energy levels if you do it right. If you have taken Adderall or Vyvanse as a child, it may be a lot more difficult to normalize because you have an altered perception of reward. You had a synthetic reward agent in your nervous system that deviated you from the normative processes that your brain would have established for you to um, appreciate and, and, and perceive reward. Um, <clears throat> okay, next question. If I truly have ADHD, why does Vyvanse keep me up? <clears throat> That's a really good question. Um, so I give you my opinion on this. Um, if a person, it's really not typical to overdose on a stimulant, right? If someone even injects, um, too much stimulant into their system, oftentimes they will go to sleep as odd as that sounds, because there's a protective mechanism in the body that says, oh, there's too much stimulation, boom, shut it off. And then they'll wake up, you know, if they've shot the methamphetamines, they'll wake up, you know, on half hour, hour, or whatever later, as some of that starts to clear their system and be completely pinned, you know? Um, what I think is happening with these ADHD medications is that person's already wound up, right? And then they're giving them so much stimulation that it's hitting this reflex of overstimulating them that it causes them to shut down. And then when the medication starts to wear off, right, then they start to get elevated again. They're still being stimulated by the medication, but they were just overstimulated to the point where things got shut off from having too much stimulation. So that may be what's going on there. I mean, it's, it's a stimulant. Now, ADHD specifically, right, 
is where you don't have enough norepinephrine, they say. And norepinephrine is what helps you focus and mentally concentrate. All right. But if the thoughts are coming too quick, you know, it's hard for you to concentrate as well. So I guess it really depends on, on are you kind of a revved up person in the first place? Or are you just so um, in, in unable to focus that you can't get your work done? So if you, if you have that kind of like mm, not really grounded, not really energized persona, and you take five bands and it helps you focus more, and then you're staying up late at night, then maybe you're taking it too late at night, or um, it's not clearing your system well enough. And this, this, the person asking this question would be a great person to try out on the tyrosine. You know, wake up, take some L tyrosine, maybe 500 to 1500 milligrams, and see if that helps you focus. Because that it almost certainly is not going to keep you awake at night and may give you the benefit of focusing at the time of day when you need it. All right, last question. Do Vyvanse and cannabis conflict at all? Can I smoke cannabis while on 30 milligrams of Vyvanse? <laughs> okay. Um, you know, Vyvanse is an upper and cannabis, depending on the type of cannabis, is usually kind of a downer. So I guess it could get you to go somewhat sideways in a very kind of creative and um, energized way. Um, so, I mean, generally you can smoke pot. But, Pot, believe it or not, has more side effects with people than a lot of drugs. People, there's a lot of people that have psychotic, manic events from pot. Okay, so pot is not like this, oh, it's just safe for everybody. It's safe for some people, but the people it's not safe for, it's really not safe for. This is a, so like alcohol is a solvent, right? It's, you can break down a solvent pretty well, even if you don't have the genetics, even if you're like a Native American or Japanese type person, you may get a whoom, huge effect that makes you much more drunk than most people uh, very quickly. But eventually the alcohol breaks down because it's a solvent. And even if you don't have the enzyme to break it down, it's still going to break down in your system. Anyway, cannabinoids are much different. Cannabinoids are an oil, right? So in order to clear an oil or a fat soluble substance, um, it takes, you have to convert it into water soluble form to get it out. That conversion process, uh, if you don't have the genetics for it, this doesn't really happen so well all by itself. Do you normally see an oil just suddenly convert into a water? No, it's, it'll slip there and it'll float on the surface and it'll float on the surface and it will float on the surface. Your body does, if it doesn't have the genetics to break that down, that builds up in your system and can cause psychosis in people. And um, I mean, like a marijuana drug test, it, it, you can see marijuana in a normal person's drug test for up to 30 days. That's because it takes so long to break down. A water-soluble compound like um, cocaine or methamphetamines probably clear the system in three to five days. You'll have a clear drug test. So, you know, if you're doing weekly drug tests, people know if I test on Sunday, I can get high on Monday and Tuesday and I can still test clean. Don't try that with pot, right? Because pot takes longer to break down. So if people don't have the genetics to break that down, they shouldn't be smoking pot, period, especially with anything else. But um, if it seems well tolerated by you, then um, pharmacologically, you know, they don't have interactions that are going to be um, concerning um, for, for a person with, you know, it's not like they affect receptors in a way that is going to make them dangerous to each other. So I believe that is the end of our questions. I um, look forward to the next questions that people um, offer up for us to answer and um, hope you have a great night. Um, if you've taken too much five minutes, you might not get to sleep tonight, but I um, hope you do. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you need help with any of these type of medications, um, please call us. Don't alter your medications without talking to your medical prescriber, especially based on something you saw here, because we are not treating you um, uh, unless you're an inpatient with us. And um, have a medical relationship with us. So thank you and have a good day or night.